I want to I wanted to address and, and Dylan and I both felt like this was a good good thing to address and a good topic and a good idea because most insurance agents will sell less this week. They'll sell less the rest of the year. And I learned a long time ago that the biggest insurance sales month of the year is December, which means that the holidays don't affect sales as much as we think. Some people use the holidays to their advantage, right? I believe it's all about sell or be sold, right? So when I was making calls in Jamaica, I was calling on a Sunday. I believe it was in like November. I believe it was really close to Thanksgiving. And I believe people were trying to, if I remember right, someone even said on one of those calls, hey, I've got company coming in. Can we do this next Tuesday? Can we do this Tuesday, right? Or whatever. Can you call me back on Tuesday, right? And, and, and some agents will take control of the call and get what they want and some won't. And what I mean by that is, absolutely, I would love to. Actually, I would be out there Tuesday anyway. Why don't I just drop the information off? Is morning or afternoon better, right? Instead of getting into this argument with them and being combative and being disagreeable and not knowing what to say or saying, oh, I can't call you back or something like that. Instead, I believe in being agreeable and then getting what we want. Absolutely. Yep. I'll be very brief. Hey, actually, I'm going to be out there on Tuesday, right? In your area, want to just drop this off and then ask a question. But most agents don't know how to handle holiday objections. They don't know how to stay in control of the call. They use that as an excuse. 92% of insurance agents fail because we use holidays as an excuse to sell less. And I'm telling you, the biggest and most productive and most successful agents I know, even when I was an agent, made sales the week of Thanksgiving. They made sales the week of Christmas. They made sales, frankly, whenever they want. Heck, I know agents out there right now that will run appointments on Thanksgiving Day. I'm not saying that I am, 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 am like that. That's what I agree that you should do. I'm just saying that proves that you can overcome any holiday objection that you get if you want to overcome it. Some will, some won't. So what? Who's next? Some people will be sold on overcoming objections that they hear and that they can sell whenever they want, however they want. Some will not be sold on the fact that they can overcome objections. And those that aren't won't be able to. My own sales team, we actually role played the objection this morning. Because I'm going to talk a lot about training, energy, and role play on tomorrow night's master class. On how, what I do with my sales team every single day, twice a day. And we talked about, well, I just, I just want to start the order next week because, it's because of Thanksgiving, right? They're going to close most people they talk to today because of the word tracks we put in place the things that we role play, the things that we trained, and the fact that we gave it some attention and validity. Because if, if, if someone's just saying, hey, I got Thanksgiving this week, it's a bad time, what are you gonna say? If you don't know what to say, then you're not gonna get what you want. Successful salespeople role play, they train, so that they're, they're never unprepared. That's what I've learned, okay? That's what I've learned. By studying successful people, hanging out with successful people, and running a successful sales organization, Successful salespeople are never unprepared. They know what they're gonna, the person's gonna say and they've rehearsed it and prepared and role played for what they know they're gonna hear. So I wanna challenge you, even though it's Thanksgiving, even though you're gonna get the holiday objection, even though you may not know how to handle it, just remember, the agree, answer, and ask still works. It's the best way in our industry of overcoming objections and that by being agreeable, telling them what you want and asking for it, you have a better chance of getting what you want than if you just assume that when they say, right now it's Monday, when they say, Cody, I'm, I'm gonna be in, you know, I'm, I'm leaving Wednesday actually to go to my family's for Thanksgiving. Okay, great, you know what? Um, the, later on in the week, after Thanksgiving and all of next week, I'm booked up. But what I could do is I'll be in your area tomorrow. I've got t only two slots available all day. And I can drop the information off, it'll take like five minutes, okay? Is morning or afternoon better for you? Well, I'm, I'm busy, man, I know, but I, but I need to get you the information. I'm going to drop it off, okay? We're gonna get it out of the way. I'm gonna take you off my list. And we're gonna put this behind us, all right? So is 10 o'clock or two o'clock better? Well, I mean, if you gotta drop it off now, probably two o'clock, right? Because 
I was more confident that I was going to overcome the objection in this fake example, it worked, right? And even when they said it again, I stayed confident in my pitch, I know what to say, I use the agree, answer, and ask, and I ask for what I want. Successful salespeople don't let ho little holiday objections get in the way of them making money. I just had an agent reach out to me, okay? I just had an agent reach out to me and said, I've got to earn, and I'm going to go read it. I'm not going to tell you who it was. He said, I, I, I'm, he said I've got to make seven grand by no, December 17th. I'm desperate. Do you think you can help me? And the answer is yes. Anyone can make seven grand in the next 23 days if they want to. If they make a decision to go do it, they'll do it, right? If, they, if, if, if they're hesitant, if they don't put forth the activity, if they're not confident in their ability and they don't put forth the effort and activity, then they won't do it. So, you know, he asked, well, well I'm like, yeah, absolutely. He said, well, what, what, what should I do? And if you think about the math, if you're selling life insurance or final expense insurance, it's, it's running 20 appointments. It's setting 30, running 20, selling 10, and an average of 700 bucks a piece. Over the course of over, over three to three and a half weeks, I can set 30 appointments, right? But if, unless you know your math, unless you know your numbers, unless you're sold on the outcome, same idea as how to handle the holiday objection, unless you're sold on the outcome, and you're sold on your ability, and you're sold that you're going to get it done, right? Because I'm, I'm actually in the middle, most people don't know this, I'm in the middle of writing a book called Six Figure Sales System. And what I'm talking about at the end of the book is execution. And I'm eventually, you know, use a show and read the book and all that. But execution is where most people lack. Everyone knows what they should do to be successful. You know, you should make some calls, you should buy some leads, you should work your warm market, et cetera, et cetera, right? We all know those things. We all know how to sell. We all generally know how to structure an appointment. We all typically know enough product knowledge to get the deal done, right? True. But where we lack is the execution to go do it. Successful people don't think about stuff, man. Time kills all deals for your prospects, which is why I don't do callbacks, or for you. Successful salespeople that earn six figures, they do it now. They don't do it later. Okay? They don't put it off. They execute when they know they should pick up the phone. I don't care if it's the day before Thanksgiving. When they know they should pick up the phone, they pick it up. The day after Thanksgiving, it's Black Friday. It's a great day to door knock because people are not working. Okay? Most of them. But most of us won't door knock because you know what? We're not going to execute on being great when we know that's what we should do. Okay? So I want to challenge you right now on insurance agent training, not only to handle the holiday objections and get what you want in life, sell or be sold, but to execute on the ideas that you have for the rest of 2020, okay? I believe in you. I believe everyone is meant to do, to do something great. And I believe that you can overcome and do anything and get anything that you want, but you have to be confident in the fact that you can do it. You have to be sold on you, right? I always, I, I have this phrase I say, which is bet on you. Take some risk. Invest in your business. Bet on you. And if you will bet on you, you'll succeed a large majority of the time. But most people aren't sold on their abilities, they don't bet on themselves, and they don't go all in on handling holiday objections, closing out the year strong, having a big 2020, and doing anything that they can to make it work, okay? So I believe in you. I want you to have a great week. I want you to have a happy Thanksgiving. And I, when you get a holiday objection, I want you to freaking handle that thing, because I want you to go role play and practice it right now, okay? Thanks for watching Interest Agent Training. Let's have a great week. You can have a great week if you want to have a great week. So let's just say you're going to have a great week. All right. All right. Real quick thought. It's the holiday. It's Thanksgiving. It's the end of the year. Agents can easily make excuses about, you know, hey, it's the holidays. It's Black Friday. I go shopping. It's, you know, it's Christmas. People don't buy at the end of the year. People spend more money at the end of the year than any other time in the year. What I want to do though is I want to let you know that what you do and what you achieve in the outcome is solely based on you. I literally had two calls that just happened when I was in Jamaica, I was calling some leads. We're going to release some videos. You'll see that. But I had two calls that happened. So one of them said, hey, it's Thanksgiving. Can you just call me after Thanksgiving? I can, yes. Hey, however, I'm going to be out in your area on Tuesday. I might as well drop this off. It'll take five minutes. We can get it out of the way. I'm assuming that's fine, right? Yes, because I asked. I didn't assume. I controlled the outcome. The other thing that happened was the person said, you know what? Uh, I'm, I've got company over, I'm super busy.
Perfect. I'll take two, I'll take two seconds. I'm actually going to be out. She said, can you call me Tuesday? I'll actually be out there Tuesday. Why don't I just drop this information off? Is morning or afternoons better? And set it, both of those ended up in appointments when most agents would have struggled and never set an appointment with either one. So the outcome is 100% in your control. Whatever you want to happen, it can happen. Are you tired of missing deals? Do you feel like you miss sales that you should be closing? Do you feel like leaving money on the table every time you talk to someone? My name is Cody Askins and I'm excited on December 11th to spend the day with you and Coach Michael Bird on our Super Selling Masterclass. We're going to go through the sales process. How do you transition from one part of the process to the next? When you get to the close, what are the words you shouldn't be using? What are the phrases you should be using? And how do you keep from creating doubt in the customer's mind? If these are problems that you struggle with, we are going to make sure that you never struggle with them again. Super Selling Masterclass, December 11th, Coach Bird and I are gonna walk through the sales system, the sales process, the sales cycle, and how you close more deals more often every single time. And I'm super excited to spend time with you on December 11th. So make sure that we see you on December 11th. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. So you brand first, then you market. Then you distribute. And I didn't really understand this. I just thought if I became a great coach, people would just come running, right? What if I told you it doesn't matter how good you are if nobody knows it? How many of you think you're the best kept secret?